deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. On today's programme, we bring you the message, God's Kind of House, from the Prophetic Voice Ministers Conference, recorded in Birmingham, England, in association with Christ Faith Tabernacle and Apostle Alfred Williams. There are various ways you can watch our Deciding Your Destiny TV programme, on TV, online and on demand. On TV, Revelation TV every Sunday at 10pm and Thursday at 2pm, online ccnorg.com, on demand via the Revelation TV website, our ccnorg.com website and from our Facebook and YouTube channels. Just look up Cecil Stewart, CCN Northern Ireland or Christian Communications Network. Be sure to check out these free resources available for you today. Thank you so much for joining us today. I trust you'll open your heart and receive the wonderful word of the Lord, anointed of the Holy Spirit, and expect the Holy Spirit to speak into your life. That's why we broadcast on so many different stations. We make available hope builders like this latest one, Getting Over What Gets You Down, very short little new pocket size. If you ask for it, we'll send it to you free of charge. We'd love to hear from you, and please pray for us. We'd be happy to receive your prayer requests and know how you're enjoying the program. Then we'll know what stations we need to continue on and which ones we need to change. God bless you. Be blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. And there are lots of people coming into God's house who never before have been there. And we need to be ready to cope with an influx of people who think differently than us. And we have the privilege of showing them the ways of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. And so in the last days, he says, I'll build my church. What kind of church will it be? It says it will be very prominent on top of the mountain. So it's not going to be hid away. It's going to be prominent. The world is going to see it like a city on a hill, no longer hid, but very visible. It'll be a church that's attractive because people will say, come let us. It's going to be attractive not just because of the building, but it's going to be attractive because of the presence of the Lord and the love of God and the attitude of the people who have a heart and a vision for the house of the Lord. It's going to be a house that's established and strong on the word, on the rock, amen? amen? And it will remain through the storms and tests and trials. God wants to be part of a church that's very clear what it believes and stands solid on the rock who is Christ Jesus, and not compromise no matter how things look. All nations will come, it will be exalted, people will come and flow together. As in Acts chapter 2 verse 42 shows how the church continued in the apostles' doctrine and they continued steadfastly in, in uh, fellowship, in breaking of bread, in prayer, and so forth. And uh, this church that's now been built, established, is going to be a steadfast church that won't be overtaken by deception of the enemy or by what the trends of our generation is. We're not going to blend in with the scenery. We're going to stand out and let the world let the world see what God's pattern is for his church. We are totally dependent on the Lord. And then it says in Psalms 118, verses 15 and 16, the voice of rejoicing and salvation 
is in the tabernacle of the righteous. So there should be a good sound of joy in the house of the Lord. When people come in, it won't be boring and depressing. It'll be a joyful sound. <laughs> Amen. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. God's arm is stretched forth and will be made bare increasingly. And the world will see that this church, his church, is strong and vibrant and making a difference in the nations. The right hand of the Lord does valley lay. So what will it be like? God's house will be a house of praise and worship. It'll be full of life. It'll be a disciplined church. It'll be a strong church in the word, not intimidated by the changing trends of the world or what people think we should believe in but we'll speak what the word says we should believe in. Be a place of great fellowship and fruitfulness where people grow and mature, develop their gifts and callings. It'll be a place of joy and honor, certainly a place of empowerment, a place of encouragement, as well as correction and discipline, making disciples and helping people reach their full potential and become faithful servants. Ephesians chapter 5, 27 reminds us that Jesus is coming back for his church. And it's not a weak defeated church, it's a glorious church. Presented a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing should be holy and without blemish. We're not all together there yet, but we're on the, on the way. Amen? Amen? God is moving in his church, and we are moving with him. And we are bringing out that manifestation of his glory to our world around us. We know very well Matthew 16, verse 18, where Jesus himself said, I will build it. Nobody else can build it. I'll build it. Right. And when he builds it, it's going to be built right. <laughs> I'll build my church, right. and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It doesn't say they won't try, but they will not prevail against it. Amen. And so we have that honor and privilege of being in the last days. We are in the last of the last days. And he's pouring out his spirit. We're part of it today. Amen. So let me give you a few key things as I shortly come to an end of this short talk. Number one, preparation. I believe we all need to be continually preparing ourselves to become conformed to his image. We need to be constantly preparing to listen more closely to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to constantly be preparing and be sensitive to those around us that are hurting and lost. But we need to be constantly preparing to work together. Second Corinthians six one says, "We're workers together with Him." And we don't want to receive the grace of God in vain. That's what it says. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. How could we receive the grace of God in vain? By not applying it and living according to it. He wants us to know we're workers together. And when we work together, God works. Amen. When we work in unity, God moves on the city and the area and the church and the nation knows we are people prepared for great days. Proverbs twenty four twenty seven says, prepare your work without and make it fit for the fields and afterward build your house. 
God is saying to us, get ready not only inside, but especially we need to be prepared inside in our own hearts, but prepare the work without. There's a need to get out there and build the house of the Lord and let the world see what it's really all about. And then Mark chapter 4, you need to read this again, I believe, sometime, verses 3 through 19, but one of the emphasis is there, preparing the ground. Preparing the ground. It's so important to be preparing the ground before we go on missions. We've had teams working ahead of time, sometimes a year or more, before we go to a nation. Preparing the ground, getting people praying, getting people ready. And even when a farmer goes to sow or prepare to sow the seed, he prepares the ground. I was brought up on a farm. You've got to gather out the stones and make sure the ground is prepared for the seed that's coming. And so we need to be preparing the ground for the seed to be sown. And the sower goes forth and sows. And the ground is prepared, it takes root and brings forth fruit. First Timothy, sorry, Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 says, hold fast to the pattern of sound words which you have heard of me. Paul is speaking to Timothy. Hold fast, that means somebody will try to take this from you and make you say something different. So it's important to watch what we say. Even when we feel like saying something negative, don't say it. We need to keep silent. If we have nothing good to say, keep silent. And so he said, hold fast to the pattern of sound words which you heard of me. So I believe as we go forward, we're also preparing for even going higher and higher and higher. How many believe the church can even go higher? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'll never forget, we were on our way to America years ago, long haul flight, it's a jumbo jet, about 500 people on board. Took off from Heathrow, and we were climbing a little bit, but I couldn't understand why we weren't continuing to climb. And the next thing was the pilot came on and said, sorry, but we lost an engine on takeoff. And he said, we will have to return to Heathrow but they had to go way out over whales and dump fuel before they could re-land. And they had to go back and took hours and hours and we couldn't go without the four engine that was designed on that jumbo jet. And if we're going to rise as high as God wants us, we've got to have all engines working, all ministries functioning, amen? to soar to the heights that God wants us to. Hold fast the form of sound words which you've heard. Let's rise higher. Let's become more like Jesus. Let's become less of us and more of him. And we will rise higher. So preparation. Secondly, dedication. Dedication. I've seen this here this week so very powerfully. Your dedication has been so obvious, working together, serving each other, working in unity, and that's so encouraging for us to see that. But dedication needs to continue more than ever. One of the definitions of dedication is simply to be consistent, to be reliable, <laughs> to be patient, to stay with it when you don't feel like staying with it. Dedication, like a soldier on the battlefield, stays with it, even at the hottest point of the battle. It's worth fighting for, amen? It's worth being dedicated for. We're talking about the kingdom of God. 
We're talking about the will of God, the purpose of God, building his church. And we can be dedicated. First Timothy 6.12, we very well know it. Fight the good fight of faith. They hold on eternal life. We're in a fight. But the good news is we're winning. Amen? Amen. The scripture tells us in Revelation that the various forces of evil will unite against the church and try to overcome them. But it says there, the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is King of kings and Lord of lords. So we're sure already that we're winning. We're on the march and we're winning because we're building it God's way. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, consider him who endured such contradiction against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. We need to be looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand. And then it says, consider him who endured such contradiction. Don't let weariness come upon you. Yes, we all feel weary for a while, but don't, don't give in to weariness. Galatians 6, 9 says, we must not be weary, but we shall reap if we do not faint. Do not be weary. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we don't give up. You will reap. Stay with it and stand firm in the things of God. I remember hearing Reinhard Bonnke tell about them being in a major mission and some of his associate leaders came right to him and said, could you come aside right away? There's a serious difference of opinion with some of the leaders. You need to come right away. He was about to go on to preach. And he said to his leader, he said, no, no, he said, I'm not leaving the harvest field to run after a mouse. Like a combine harvester, stopping the combine to get down off the combine to run after a mouse. We're in the big harvest. We can't be running about after little differences of opinion to stay with it and keep our focus because we're in something big. We're building the house of the Lord. Number three, revelation. Aren't you glad God is revealing to us new revelation day by day? Not only of his word in terms of basic doctrine, but also he's revealing revelation regarding specific situations in our own lives, families, circumstances. He reveals to us answers to impossible problems. Revelation. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Our light affliction is but for a moment, but it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And the next verse says, while we do not look at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. We need to live with the vision of eternity in mind every single day. Live with the vision of eternity in mind every single day. Acts 26, 18, Paul told about his conversion. He had gone before many trials. He'd suffered beatings. He'd suffered so much imprisonment. But he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. God told him what his calling was to open the eyes of the blind, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified. 
my faith which is in me. And then he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. This is what he said before King Agrippa. May we be able to say that at the end of our journey. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision for my life, for my calling, for my gifts, for my function in the body and the church. What a wonderful thing to be able to say. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, no matter what it cost, and it cost him everything. He had to suffer everything. The loss of all things, he said, I suffered, but I count them as rubbish compared to my knowledge of Jesus and my relationship with him. So that's the kind of revelation God is showing to us. And in Acts 1, he says, we've received the power after the Holy Spirit came upon us. So we can add value to others. We can fulfill his purpose. We can honor his will every single day. Psalms 112, verse 7, talks about our heart being fixed. Heart fixed. We shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Our heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Our heart's established. We don't need to be afraid of evil tidings. It's on the news every day. Bad news is going to increase, and the world is hearing it, and the news media seem to delight in it. But we have great news. Our heart is fixed on his kingdom and his purpose and his building of his church. And 2 Corinthians 1, 24, as I close, reminds us, by faith we stand. Amen? Amen. You cannot stand by feelings. You stand by faith. The just shall live by faith. We have been called to live the life of overcomers and not to fear, no matter what it takes. So we need to stop describing our problem and start declaring God's plan. Many people spend their time describing their problem, but we should be declaring God's plan. God's got a plan. Amen. Amen. It involves every one of us. And the set time to favor Zion has come. He's arisen and has favor toward us. I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. It will be a glorious church. It will be the church established on the top of the mountain. And all nations shall flow to it. They'll run to it in multitudes. He will teach us his ways. We will walk in his path. We are privileged to be alive today. And God has given us an upgrade. He's raised us up to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So let's rejoice. Let's go from this conference as never before. Determined, dedicated, seeing the revelation, committed to the great cause. And we will see the glory of the Lord breaking out everywhere we go. For the set time to favor Zion has come. In Jesus' name. Let's stand, please. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up and say, thank you, Lord. I'm part of your church. <laughs> thank you, Lord. You're building your church. And the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Thank you, Lord. You included me. <laughs> to you be the glory. To you be the praise. Hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you. Over every minister, every leader, every person in this gathering. Those watching, I speak blessing and favor over you. That your eyes will be opened with a greater degree of revelation. In the name of Jesus, that you will say, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Thank you for your vision. 
Father, I speak blessing and favor and strength over not only the individual people, but over the churches and over the communities. Let your glory be seen and let the world know that the time to favor Zion has come. Your house shall be established on top of the mountain and all nations shall flow onto it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. We're delighted you've been with us today. I trust you'll meditate upon what you've heard. We have very encouraging literature such as exercising your influence. It will really build you up and enable you to be very active in the call of God that you have on your life. Be a soul winner, be an encourager. See breakthroughs in your life. So send for this. Be in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. And we will pray for your requests if you let us know. Also, please pray for us. And if you feel the Lord is leading you, spend some time for guidance as to what you should give into this ministry to help us further the call of Christ. Thank you. We look forward to hearing from you. You can watch this program again along with other messages by Dr. Stewart by going on to our YouTube channel. Just look up CCN Northern Ireland. Make sure you click subscribe to receive email notifications of further videos we upload. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook to receive all the latest updates, news and upcoming events. Many people are encouraged by these programs but have not yet been in touch. So please email us today and let us know how these messages by Dr. Stewart and the Word of God that he shares are helping you. on today's program contact us today CCN 547 Antrim Road Belfast County Antrim Northern Ireland BT 15 3BU telephone 02890 779 552 email ccn at ccnorg.com check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com